The purpose of this show, the of this show is to guide you to realign, to realign with habits that get you to live the life, live the life you've always dreamed of. Right. This, this is the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast with Jesse Ewing. This is the habit-based lifestyle Where you can access your full potential right now Finally break free from destructive habits That dream life, if you want it, you can have it This is where you transform your health Mind, business, and relationships Or do nothing and keep your life the way it is But if you're ready for change, you're in the right place This is where you're gonna learn how to live a habit-based lifestyle You, you, you are tuning in to the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast With, with, with your host, Jesse Yule This is this is the habit-based lifestyle. Let's go. We're gonna get uh we're gonna get a big intro rolling in on video with that coming soon. So if you guys are tuning in live, uh go ahead and just do hashtag live. Uh any questions that come up in this uh episode of the coach's corner, uh just type them up in the comments. Uh Caleb, uh my badass assistant will just any questions that come up, we'll just roll into that. So um Guys, today is obviously Friday. It's Friday, uh, the 11th of December. Uh, we got about three weeks left of 2020. And as we are kind of sitting here this week, we're like, man, what are we going to talk about this week? Um, and so me and Caleb kind of were like, hey, man, what are some things that, that are really important for business and life? And so on today's episode, we're going to talk about a few things that, that I think will help prepare you guys for 2021, um, but really start to think about your business differently heading into uh, this new year. And, you know, obviously 2021 is, is, is going to be here in like three weeks, hopefully if, if the world doesn't end or if uh, you know, we don't get attacked by Chinese spies or something like that, then uh, we should make it to 2021, but, and you never know, you know, what everything that's happening. So um, I also have a guest on here um, who's one of the guys inside of our program, uh, Habit-Based Lifestyle Acceleration. He's also uh, one of the assistant coaches that we have inside of the group. So uh, we're going to ask him a few questions and, uh, and we're going to get rolling. So first up is, uh, is Caleb, uh, who is my assistant. Uh, most of you guys may know him in the group. He's the one who reaches out to you a lot of times. and. Uh, He's a badass. So uh, what do we got first, man? Yes. Okay. Um, so one of the questions uh, that we've gotten is in business, what is the most important thing that you're seeing in the marketplace uh, right now in this season? I think the, I think the biggest thing that, uh, that I'm really seeing in the marketplace um from a business perspective is, is the ability for you or I as a business owner to really take a stand um, in our business. And a lot of people are like, well, what does that mean? Uh, you know, I think the the biggest thing it means is like, can you take a stand for what you uh, believe in um, from a business perspective? So if we think about like an industry of business, maybe you know, fitness or, or, you know, a lot of the guys we work with are chiropractors too, but like there's a traditional way of doing business and kind of delivering your business. And, and where I see really uh, we want to take that stand is going away from the normal traditional way of doing things and doing them in a different way. That's actually more efficient uh, for clients. Um, now with that being said, uh, if you think about that, that means that a non-traditional way of doing things, that means probably 50% of the people are not going to agree uh, with you because they don't like to necessarily change um, and, and they kind of expect a certain way to do things. And so it allows us to do one of two things. We educate the customer on why what we're doing is different, why it's better for them. Uh, but we also um, kind of tell the people who we're not for, because if we're, if we try to be for everybody, um, then we kind of end up, you know, one of two things happens. Either we don't really attract anyone or the people we attract, we don't really want to, uh, work with them anyways. And then it just kind of becomes frustrating. 
So uh, what would you say to all those business uh, owners out there who are scared to take a stand? There's a lot of people who are scared uh, to kind of put their voice out there as a business owner um, into the marketplace. What's the difference between a business owner that takes a stand versus one that doesn't stays kind of quiet? Yeah, I would say, well, one is it's, it's much, it feels much more authentic to take a stand because it's coming from, you know, your place of, of truth. So taking a stand is really telling the truth about, Hey, this is why I believe this to be better for, you know, my client. This is why I believe this to be true. Um, so when we take, when I say take a stand, I mean, like, telling the truth of what you believe is better for, you know, yourself, for your clients, um, and why you think that maybe the traditional way of doing things is not the best for your clients. And you've discovered this new way. Um, and it's to really improve your client's life. And so I think, um, that's hard for people because, you know, you're changing a client's worldview and sometimes there's a clash involved in that. We may lose clients, uh, because they don't believe in that. Um, and so that's where I feel like a lot of people kind of struggle with that internal conflict of, you know, hey, sometimes, you know, yeah, taking a stand is is really hard in business because sometimes that means we're losing clients. But I, but I actually believe that the clients we lose, we're going to lose over some other thing, you know, whether we change up. I can remember you know, even being in gyms where, you know, you get new equipment and half the members were like, Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. You got new equipment. And then I can remember where the other half would be like, Oh my gosh, that was my favorite machine. And, you know, I'm like, Hey, you know, I get it. But like, we also, uh, we just upgraded the new equipment. What about that? They're like, but that was my favorite machine. And then I'm like, well, it's actually in the warehouse over here. Do you want to buy it? And then they're like, no, I don't want to buy it. So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, when you when you take a stand by default, half of the people are either going to like or not like what you put out there. Um, and we're after that half that is excited um, about who you are authentically as a business owner, huh? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you just look at like politicians, like, I mean, without getting political, half the people hate Donald Trump, the other half the people like him. Sure, there's a you know, 60, 40 split or 50, 50 split, like however you want to do it. But like in politics, you know, if you think about, uh, you know, just include politics into your business and say, well, listen, you take a stand, half the people are going to like you, half the people aren't going to like you. So you got to get over that. But could you imagine having, you know, 70 million people not like you versus like five or 10? Yeah. Um, and, and so I, sometimes I try to think about things like that as like, man, could you imagine that, that weight and pressure of waking up every day and knowing that like 60, 70 million people like hate you um, versus, you know, only like five to 10. So, yeah. Um, another question, what are, as a business owner for you, what are uh, things that clients and potential clients look at you uh, the most? I, th I think the biggest thing that, that I've learned in like 14 years of being a business owner, being entrepreneur, even the things that I look for in, in coaches and people I work with is, is consistency. And I think it's the number one thing that, that people miss on. Um, and I'll give you kind of an example of like, let's just say, you know, we, we post content every single day. And so I think potential clients are looking for, okay, what is the content that, you know, Jesse might be putting out today? These are potential clients looking at me every single day saying, Hey, is this guy really consistent? Not only with what he puts out in content, but also with what he says in his messaging and like, how does this guy show up um, on a day-to-day -day basis? And I, I think those are things, even the clients that we have is like, they're constantly looking at how is, how is Jesse showing up? Is it, you know, is, is he meeting the standard that he's setting for everyone else? Um, and, and I really believe that this is a standard that 95% of people are signing up or joining a program 
or wanting to work with you because they see some consistency inside of you um, that is attracting, it's attractive to them. Um, and, and it's part of why they want to work with you. And part of the reason why they want, you know, want to do business with you. So, yeah. Yeah. So consistency. Um, that's why I heard consistency is something that clients and potential clients uh, look at you as a business owner the most at, um, especially in your posts. Um, what are some, like speaking of consistency, consistency, what are some habits um, as a business owner um, that you recommend for business owners to do every single morning, every single day um, to develop this habit of consistency? Well, I think part of being a business owner is like getting your kind of like getting your own shit or your own energy, like figured out first. So like the first couple hours, every single day, making sure that you, you are like the priority. Um, and so what does that mean? That means that, you know, first thing you're doing in the morning, first thing that I do is, you know, I get all my clothes on, I go to the office and I start working out because uh, working out is the number one thing that's going to help me shift my energy. So no matter how I wake up, no matter you know if I'm frustrated, pissed off, no matter if I'm happy, um, the reality of it is, is I always feel better uh, once I've done a workout. Now, Sometimes I adjust those. Sometimes it's going for a walk. Sometimes it's stretching, which is what it's kind of been lately. Um, and then other times it's, you know, lifting weights, things like that. I think the key thing is, is rather than focusing on what type of workout you're doing and getting caught up in that, like just move your body for 20, 30, 40 minutes a day, first thing in the morning so that you actually have the energy um, to begin working through the day. The other thing that I would say is like, you know, also going through a process of like, you know, inquiry to where you're actually working on things that, you know, say you're frustrated from the day before, uh, whether it be with a client or whether it be with, you know, your family or, or even employees, like you have to have the ability to work through questions. Um, with yourself to be able to deal with them and learn from those things. So you're not making the same mistake. It's kind of like, you know, if we don't, if we don't look at ourselves in the mirror, um, we're going to just sit there and kind of blame all of our problems on our life on, you know, our wife, our kids, on our employees. Uh, so I think it's really important to kind of do like self-reflection every single day to put ourselves in the my, my, uh, right mind frame um, and then obviously nutrition, nutrition's huge. And, you know, I will say spending 20 years in the fitness industry, um, the key things in everything that you're doing is like move, uh, movement is really important because it changes our energy. And the other thing that changes our energy is our nutrition that we put in our body. Um, so making sure that we're paying attention to those, whether that's, you know, supplements in the morning, whether that's, um, you know, you drinking, making sure you're drinking 20 to 40 ounces of water in the morning or um, eating something. I know a lot of people like to do uh, intermittent fasting, which is great, um, but you sometimes can miss out on a lot of micronutrients, um, which and macro and macronutrients, which actually impact your ability to recover and impact your ability to, you know, have energy. So you have to also look at those things too. Let's uh, let's do a little uh, hat giveaway. So if you guys are on this, uh, obviously you got to be present to win. Um, and so we want to make sure, hey, check this out. Habit Life. These are uh, brand new hats uh, that just came off, hot off the shelf, hot off the press. And uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to uh, win one of those. Uh, so if you guys are on here, first guy who types in Habit Life, uh, that hat is yours. It's going to be sent to you. Um, so go ahead and type in right now, Habit Life, and uh, and let's see who wins this hat. So um, first guy who pops up. I do a hike each morning. Awesome. Ed, yeah, I love it. You know, a lot of people I will prescribe in the program is like if they don't like to work 
out early in the morning as far as like lift weights. Um, I think walking and, uh, and hiking is one of the most powerful things that we can do. We got, uh, Jim Alexander, uh, he typed in habit, habit life. So he, uh, he's following along. So he's, if you can reach out to him later after the show, uh, we'll make sure that he gets, gets that also, uh, Ed Downs, I'll make sure you get one also. So, um, yeah, we want to make sure you guys are set up with gear and, uh, and you're rocking, rocking the habit life gear. So, uh, let's get Nick. We got Nick on here. Nick's inside of our program. He's one of our, uh, coaches too. Um, Nick, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, I want to, uh, I want to talk to you. Number one, you know, you're one of the assistant coaches in here, but like before that you were part of the, you were just in the program. Um, but like, what has been the biggest thing you've learned being inside of this habit-based lifestyle business acceleration program? I think the biggest thing is getting past, you know, all the noise that's in the world with business coaching and actually just trying to be myself. You know, you would, you would talk to me when I first started, like, Hey, all the technical stuff you do, all of it looks great, but where are you? Like, where are you in all of this? And uh, so that's been the biggest thing. And you continue to challenge me, even though I'm helping coach just as my own for my stuff, you know, you challenged me. We had the whole experience yesterday where I got called out on Facebook and you said, okay, well, what's the lesson? And here the lesson was, I wasn't being authentic with myself. So the people were calling it out. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's great, man. It's, I think the, the thing for you is like, Hey, I'm a coach. Like I kind of know it all. We have a tendency to, uh, to kind of think that. And, uh, I think the cool thing is, is like, you know, you're humble enough to, to learn. Um, and I think that's, what's important. You know, like I talked about that habit of self-reflection in the morning is like, Hey, are we reflecting back on, you know, maybe it's like somebody triggered me, called me out for something and, and I kind of initially get pissed back, but then I got to go back to the lesson and be like, okay, well, shit, what am I really learning uh, from this? Cause I think we have a tendency to kind of believe our own hype sometimes um, and, and not learn, you know? And, and so I think that's, I think that's really important for us is, is just to always be learning about ourselves um, learn about our tendencies. Cause you know, I could think I'm right, you know, 90% of the time and you know, that could actually get me in trouble, you know? And so I think that's good. What is, uh, so you've been in this program, um, you know, you're learning, you're doing all these things. And, and like you said, you got caught up in, you know, design, right? You're like kind of one of these guys that's creative, you know, I'm going to design all this stuff, which I think people have, a tendency to get caught up in funnels, to get caught up in websites, to get caught up in Facebook ads. You know, if we look at it from that perspective, like what are things that you've really changed inside of that? Well, for me personally, the biggest one is I've almost gotten rid of all of it, right? There is a website for my program available. I haven't checked it in, I don't know, six months. Hopefully it's still running. Um, you know, I don't have click funnels anymore. I don't have all this random noise that's slowing me down. So what am I doing? I'm actually working. I'm actually coaching. And when I'm not doing that, I'm actually with my family. I'm taking care of myself because I'm not, okay, Hey, I just got off the call with coach Jesse. Now I got to go fix that funnel. Like what was broken? Someone said it wasn't working. So I've really pared down everything in my life to like, what's the bare minimum I need to run my business. How do I get myself in front of the most people possible simply? And then how do I enjoy the free time that it's actually created for me? Yeah, dude. I think one of the cool things is, is, uh, you've just made a, a major move in your life, you know, from Kami, California to, I guess, Colorado is kind of, uh, Kami too, but, um, only in parts, most yeah. of it's red. Uh, there, there is some blue, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I never would have, Without the headspace, like I'm born and raised in California, 39 years, I never thought I'd move. And in, in less than about an eight month span, we went from, hey, maybe we should move further north in California to let's move three states away, 1800 miles, completely change our lifestyle. 
Yeah. And that's a, that's a whole identity shift in itself. You know, you know, for me, we moved from, you know, Gig Harbor, Washington to Orange County, California, which is like, you know, going from eating like apples to eating oranges is like completely different. Like, but in doing that, there was a transition where a lot of people don't understand. They're like, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. But like, dude, I really had to change like who I was in order to do that, which is kind of like what you're going through now is like, hey, you know, we don't have friends, we don't have family, you know, right by us. But so we have to really just start all the way over. What has that been like? Well, the beauty, the beauty is, I mean, if we tie it back into the business side is nothing's changed on that. Everything got pared down so simple. Like the hardest part was, okay, where's my office? I got to set my computer and my camera up. And I was up and running. The, the, the joy I've had is I've already had the opportunity to get back into jujitsu, something I couldn't do back in California because I didn't have the time. I didn't have the freedom. Here, I've got it here. So I'm making connections there. I'm making friends there. My kids are actually, you know, getting more time with me. We're getting out and they're getting to make new friends. So the space that was created by simplifying everything has brought on all this extra opportunity. Yeah, it's awesome, man. I, what I really love seeing is like, hey, this is a lifestyle business. So like lifestyle is number one. Business fits into the lifestyle uh, where, you know, for a lot of us, you know, at some point in our life, we had that backwards where it was like business was first, lifestyle was second. It's like, man, I can't understand why I can't ever achieve this lifestyle that I want. Yet we put business in front of that. And that's where, you know, we were making that big mistake. Yeah. And you've known me a couple of years ago. you watch? I was, I was that person business forward. Well, what was it doing? It was burning everything else down. Yeah. Me, the company, the, not only the business itself was on the rocks, but then everything relationship wise, my, my own personal health. Um, so yeah, making it a lifestyle business. Like I find myself a lot of times it's four or five o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, I don't have a call. I don't have anything to do. I'm almost, I'm like, shit, what do I do? I got to find some work. No, don't find work. Go outside and play. Go have some fun with the kids. Right. I, I, yeah. I mean, sometimes for me, even I'm like, I'm pretty disciplined. And when I go to work, when I come home, but sometimes I'm like, uh, you know, I don't have anything else going on. I'm like, shit, I don't know if I can go home. And I'm like, oh, let me ask the boss. Um, and so sometimes I get caught up even in like feeling like I got to stay at work. So Great. dude, uh, one of the other things that's been really cool to watch is your transformation and fitness. Like what have you lost in the last, you know, six months to a year? Uh, for 2020, I had lost 65 pounds. And I, awesome, I man. do say if I hadn't have been moving, it would be higher up there. But, you know, living out of a hotel for 60 days, not not having access to everything. But the, the beauty was I never lost control of what I had gotten to. So I didn't digress. I stayed right where I was. And it was because everything like we talk about lifestyle business. I would not have been able to run my business a year or two years ago from a hotel room for two months. I would have either lost my mind or the business would have just burnt down to the ground. But I have structured it now with your help and just the mindset of all I need is a computer and a laptop and just my personality and me wanting to do what I need to do. For sure. Yeah, dude, that's been that's been really cool to watch is, you know, well, obviously I've known you for a little over a couple of years, but like to watch the transition from the guy who, you know, could barely get off a bus, you know, having a panic attack to a guy, you know, completely owning himself today. Yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. So we got, I wanted to recognize a couple of guys on here. Uh, we got some Milton Washington in the house. So that's, uh, that's awesome. So here's the thing, man, as, as I love gig Harbor, I love Washington, but it's nothing yeah. like orange County. Um, and I won't be coming back unless it's a visit in the summer for the one month of the year that it's really nice and beautiful. So, well, Hey man, uh, anything else that you want to add, um, you know, something you've either gotten out of this program or that's just had you see things completely different with your, your marketing and kind of all that process? Uh, what, I, what I would say to people on the fence or, you know, having now worked with people inside of the program is from the outside, what it looks like is one more stressor we're going to add to our lives. 
But the reality is the first thing we do inside of Habit-Based Lifestyles, get rid of all the clutter, get rid of all the excess that you don't need with this program. So it's kind of like the, the clean sweep. You come in here, you get punched around a little bit in the first few days, like, hey, you don't need this, you don't need that, stop doing this. But then right real quick, you know, within a week, you've got clarity, you've got the ability to actually have free time for yourself. That's awesome, man. Well, hey, uh, thank you so much for being on. And uh, dude, I appreciate everything you've done. And just the coach that you show up as inside of our group and, and the help that you're bringing to all the clients inside our program. I appreciate you too, coach. All right, bro. Hey, have enjoy your new house, man. I'm a little bit jealous of the square footage. <laughs> Got a lot of furniture to go by, but we'll get there. Just make sure you go to uh, Restoration Hardware. Oh, there, there's an outlet about two minutes away from the house. So I've been trying to steer my wife away from it. Nice. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. All right. You got a final question on there. Yeah. Um, let's get into it. So we ask this question a lot to clients, to people on Facebook. Um, but Jesse, what is the greatest lesson that you have learned um, this week as a business owner that you can share um, with other people? Yeah. So we did, uh, we did ask this question and man, I think it goes back to, um, is just, you know, consistency. Like I keep coming back to this because I mean, if you think about habit-based lifestyle, it's like, it's all about consistency with your habits. Um, you know, and I, I hate to tell people that like, it's really that simple, but it is, you know, and it just comes down to, am I, am I willing to do the consistent work to get me the results that I ultimately want? Um, this goes all the way back to me, uh, being an athlete. So like growing up, being an athlete was my business and I was probably, probably the hardest worker on any team that I was on. I wasn't the most gifted athlete, but I worked harder than anybody else. I was more consistent than anybody else. And that transferred over into my business and the coaches that I've really learned the most from were typically the ones who were the most consistent at what they did. And so I really tried to look at, hey, man, what made these people successful? It wasn't like some hack. It wasn't some, you know, magic thing they did outside of just being consistent. And that's what I really learned from a lot of the coaches that I've, I work with and I've worked with. And those are usually the things that I look at for most people that I work with is like, hey, how consistent are they on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah. And even, um, some, as speaking from somebody who works with you, um, you are probably, you are the most consistent person I know. And, uh, even working with you day in and day out, uh, Monday through Friday, um, that, that consistency rubs off on me, consistency and energy, consistency in my habits and working out consistency and stretching. Uh, so I don't have a bad back like you when I'm old. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, I can see your consistency rubbing off on, on me as someone who works with you um, all the time. And it's made my life um, that much better as well. So I would say that how, how important consistency is, um, especially for business owners with employees or contractors or people working for them. Well, let's talk about your uh, consistency, man. You're, uh, you just finished 75 hard. So what was that? What was that like? Like, what did you learn out of that? Yeah. Um, I initially went into it, um, wanting to build consistency because I'm so inconsistent. And, uh, through that, I found a huge power inside of myself that I've never felt before. Um, just literally kicking my own ass from when I didn't want to wake up and go to the gym and work out. Um, and I didn't want to do my second workout, but every single day, uh, literally just making the commitment, um, to read, uh, to drink a gallon of water, to work out twice a day. Um, and to stick to a diet that would actually benefit me, um, versus, um, snacking on like junk food all the time and cheating on my diet. Um, so actually staying consistent really gave me a huge power to keep going and, and, and push myself even further in every area of my life. Whereas normally I would just hang on to one area of my life, um, by a thread, um, and this through this consistency in every area of my life, I've been able to move forward a lot faster. And um, mentally, I feel um, like bulletproof 
because I yeah. know how to, um, I guess like shut down that inner bitch in me that doesn't want to work out when I'm tired or doesn't want to, um, that just wants a, like a pint of ice cream at night. You know what I mean? Sure. I think, well, so if you think about what you really said, it goes back to the AM habit that I said is like, okay, if, if there was any habit that would actually change your life, the most significantly it would be working out in like nutrition, right? Yeah. So yeah, obviously self-reflection is, is right up there, but I would say those two things, if you can do those two things consistently, like you, you take those and you put those in other areas of your life. And so, you know, what really started for me was like way back in the day, being committed to working out and being committed to my nutrition. Those are the things that I've probably had as the longest habit which is exactly what you said. Like, Hey, if I can do these two things, everything else begins to change. Um, and so I really truly believe that, that everything starts with like your fitness, your nutrition, your body. And then we push that into other areas of life. Sometimes, um, people get caught up in, in the fitness and nutrition side to where that's all they do. Um, but I really believe if we leverage those into other areas of life, that's when we really start seeing a huge change. So I just, I want to recognize you in that because, you know, I gave you a hard time about doing 75 hard. Um, but what was cool was to actually watch you stay committed to it. And so, you know, I want to honor you for that. Um, you know, but it's, it's also, man, it's like, that's a big commitment that you made. Um, and it's cool to see you continue on that path. Cause sometimes in the morning I'm like, I don't really feel like working out. And then it's like, well, Caleb's going to be here. So I don't want to be a bad example for him. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, and it really is just being in this environment where it's the habit based lifestyle, constantly building habits, just working with you. I'm like, wow, I really got to get my habits dialed in. I really got to work on the habits that I haven't been working on. So that's one of the huge pluses of um, wearing habit life, um, and stuff like that, you know? Awesome, man. All right. Well, let's, we have a book or two, uh, yeah. to give away. So let's, uh, let's do this. So this is a book, um, I wrote in, uh, basically two years ago it was, um, it's called man in the mirror. Um, it's kind of like my life story leading up to, um, 2018. And, uh, we're going to be giving away a couple copies now. Uh, one thing I will tell you is if I had to do it all over again, I would not have wrote a book in the beginning. I believe that I needed a book to actually like launch my business. Um, and so many of the things that I teach you guys and talk about inside of this program are a lot of the mistakes I made, which was I launched a book, I launched a podcast because that's what everybody told me I needed to be successful. Um, and now you know, I would say, no, you don't need those things at all. In fact, um, I have another book that is pretty much ready to release, but I'm not going to release it because I just, I don't really feel like it's the right time yet, but I will be doing it soon. Um, it's already written and uh, I want to make some changes to it. But like, I'll tell you right now, if you think you need to launch a book or you need to launch a podcast to be successful, um, that's not true. If you think you have to have a funnel, if you think you have to have a website, if you think you have to have all these things to be successful, you don't. Uh, prove your success first organically, and then you can back it up with those things. So like, I do believe in those. I just don't believe in them in the beginning um, because I made a lot of mistakes uh, with those. So, um, you know, do like the, the naked version of success is, is not having a lot of those things. So. Okay. So, uh, let's do man in the mirror. If you want a book type in man in the mirror, we'll get one shipped out to you. Um, just type in man in the mirror right now. Uh, I have a t-shirt to give away. Also, I want to make sure you guys get that. So if you want a t-shirt, uh, type in habit life style, and we will give you a t-shirt. There you go. Habit lifestyle. Uh, so first guy writes man in the mirror, habit based lifestyle. We'll make sure you get a book and that you get a t-shirt or you get one or the other. Yeah. I think, uh, they're a little behind on the stream. Um, yeah, that's cool. There we go. Man in the mirror, JJ Steelman. Uh, so we'll have, uh, we'll have Caleb reach out to you, get your address, uh, make sure you get a sign signed copy. 
getting ready to start the Kindle version. There we go. Travis Raider. Uh, Travis, you're already in the program, man. We got, we got a shirt for you going. So we're going to do Josh Pepping. Uh, he's, uh, he's from Milton, Washington. So dude, it's great to have you, uh, some local, local guys in the house. So, Hey guys, I want to, uh, number one, I want to thank you for being on this week. Uh, we're going to be back next Friday, another episode. If you have any questions or topics that you want to talk about, or maybe you just want to come on live and ask a question or two, um, we'd love to have you and, uh, just, just type in man live hashtag live. Uh, we'll reach out to you and see if you want to join us live or uh, have a couple of questions answered. So guys, until uh, next week, uh, me and Caleb are signing out. The purpose of this show, the of this show is to guide you to realign, to realign with habits that get you to live the life, live the life. you've always dreamed of. Right. This, this is the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast. With Jesse, you.